Hi, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about geostatistical methods to measure patterns of black bear sightings in New Jersey. I'm making, I'm making a concerted effort to put NCCU faculty and student presentations onto our YouTube page. This is a presentation that I gave at the CDAG conference in 2014. In regards to black bear sightings in New Jersey, I grew up in New Jersey, and this has been an issue of debate for the last 20 years or so. There's been issues of black bear encroachment. It's been a concern from New Jersey residents as approximately 2,500 to 3,000 black bear reside in New Jersey. And I'll show a map of where exactly they reside, and I'll focus on this particular study area in Northwest New Jersey. Starting in about 2003, we have yearly bear hunts that keep this number stabilized or so. And like I said before, most of the bear sightings are concentrated in Northwest New Jersey, although every all 21 counties in New Jersey have seen at least one black bear sightings. And we're gonna use the GIS to illustrate and analyze these particular patterns. This is of particular concern because in, 2000, in September of 2014, there was a black bear, fatal black bear attack in Passaic County. This is the particular study area that we're talking about. We're talk, looking at Northwest New Jersey. We have Hunterdon County, Morris County, Passaic, Sussex, and Warren County. And you can see the eastern parts of Passaic and Morris County kind of encroach into pretty much suburban, uh, suburban New Jersey and you know, the, the outlying urban areas of New York City. In terms of a literature view, you can see the map over here to the right, which shows information from the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife. And this is how they map their black bear sightings. And you can just see the distribution of these black bear sightings and the movement of black bear throughout the state. When I grew up in New Jersey in the 70s, 80s, and you know early 90s, black bears weren't a concern, but they're seen, they're seen on a regular basis these days. In terms of GIS, this animal behavior can be easily brought into a GIS. Now, in the United States, most of this research is focused on deer vehicle collisions. Unfortunately, it's, it's hard to tell with regional differentiate, you know, with regional differences, um, the exact causes of deer vehicle collisions. You know, we have pixel variety, we have location to bridges, we have different kind of local factors that affect all these. So it's hard to encapsulate these within one, but there's a lot of good regional studies that focus on this. We have bear studies that have been have, that have used geostatistics, ANOVAs, buffer analysis, and regression throughout the pretty much North America that show these. And like I said before, the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife publishes black bear sightings at the municipality level. Now, sub-county enumeration units in New Jersey include townships and boroughs. And you can see the map right here where you can see some areas in pink. Well, these areas in pink because they're much smaller. So we're going to look to address this using uh, an enumeration unit called the quadrant. Now, in terms of how I got these black bear points, these black bear sightings were supplied by the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife as addresses between 2010 and 2012, and I geocoded those and projected them in the New Jersey State Plain, and almost all of them geocoded correctly. Now, what I did is I only queried category one and category two bears, which were threat to life and property and nuisance bears. And within my study area, there was about 4,700 points within the study area. As you can imagine, 4,700 points superimposed on this five county area is just gonna look like a mess. So I need some way to analyze this. And you can see a zoomed in version here of Chester County and uh, I'm sorry, Chester Borough and Chester Township within the border of Morris County here next to Somerset County. And like I said previously, the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife kind of grouped these enumeration units and kind of counted these bear sightings by enumeration units. And you can see this can be problematic because we have this annular unit here of Chester Borough, which is completely, you know, surrounded by Chester um, Township. And then we have this little cluster of bear sightings up here, which are going to count within this entire enumeration unit right here. So I wanted to kind of figure out a way to universally place these and analyze these in some way, shape, and form. Now, the first thing that I looked at was quadrant analysis. And I determined my quadrant size based on the study size, which is about 2,000 square miles and the number of sightings. And my quadrant sizes were about 0.83 miles in size, about 9 tenths of a mile by 9 tenths of a mile. So I had about 
25, 2600 or so of these quadrants that were superimposed on the study area. And basically, I used a spatial join, and then I summarized that count as a result of my spatial join to basically compute the expected versus the observed using a Poisson distribution that can be calculated in Excel. So this is my formula up top for the size of the study area. And I just created this using the fishnet function in ArcGIS to actually create this fishnet or create this quadrant. And then I spatially joined them and then brought this into Excel with this very, you know, fairly simple formula right here. And when we, look, when we look at the results of our quadrant analysis, we had about 1,100 quadrants that contained at least one bear sighting. We had a high site, a high quadrant of about 73 sightings in West Milford Township, which is in Passaic County. And then I ran a conglomeroff smeroff test that showed the difference between the what we observed, which is highlighted here in blue, and what was expected, highlighted here in purple. So basically what this test looks for is an absolute difference, not an absolute difference between these numbers, but an absolute difference between the observed and expected to see how statistically different they are. This is an inferential statistic. And this showed that there was a difference between our Poisson distribution and what we observed here in our quadrant analysis. And I, I could show that there was they were statistically different. Now, the one problem with running quadrant analysis is that when I run this spatial join, we just use a count, okay, a point and polygon calculation. So if we happen to have points that occurred around that particular enumeration but not within it, they wouldn't be counted for that enumeration unit. So it's problematic based on, first of all, the size of the lattice and the placement of the lattice. So the other thing that I wanted to run, and this is something I've done here in the past, is run some sort of range density analysis where I create a density surface using my point density function using a one mile radius. So for all 4,700 or so of these points, I create a density surface. Now, the one mile radius is significant because the average black bear habitat is about two to three square miles. So just using my simple formula of pi r squared, one mile would give me about a habitat of a little bit more than three square miles. So you can notice if I have points that occur outside of a quadrant, I'm going to this density surface is going to start to calculate these within it. And it's going to smooth it a little. So you can see my map on the left has the results of my quadrant analysis and my point and polygon analysis or my spatial join here. But on the right here, it's smoothed by this average density. Okay. And I wanted to address those issues a little bit more because those are some of the problems that you run into when you run quadrant analysis. Now, my densities were averaged within these 2,600 or so quadrants, and we had many more fewer zero quadrants or zero values using this method, only 342 versus our point and polygon. So, for our range density analysis, this sighting analysis ranged from about zero to about 36 sightings per square mile. And our largest concentration occurred in Passaic County up here, up towards the New York border, and Northeast Sussex County here. Okay. We had other concentrations seen here in Morris County, Northern Morris County here, Rockaway and Jefferson, Northwest Sussex County over here, and then Northwest Warren County and a little bit here in Hunterdon County here. Okay, but this is running my density analysis and then grouping it using the statistics function, the zonal statistics fun function in my spatial analyst. Now, I also wanted to run some cluster analysis. And We've talked about in my previous lectures, I've talked about my global statistics versus my local indicators for spatial autocorrelation that measures spatial autocorrelation. And we can run on the range density, and I use a Geddes Ord to delineate hot spots and cold spots with statistical significance using this formula here. And when I run my cluster analysis, I didn't have a lot of cold spots because I, I did have a lot of zero values here, but I had a lot of clusters here. And as you can see, my clusters are going to simulate what we saw before. 
and our clusters just look for high values surrounded by other high values and look at those in concert with this GI star statistics and then with a z-score and you can see my darkest pink here these are my most significant clusters here in Passaic County Sussex County Sussex County Warren County and Northern Morris County right here and I found this a little bit surprising because I thought they would be really high in Sussex County and some in Passaic County but I didn't expect to see these clusters in Warren County and Morris County. So you can see where these clusters are. They're located around Lake Apactong here in Morris County, which is the largest lake, I believe, in uh, New Jersey, around the Swartzwood. So we've got Swartzwood uh, Forest here in Sussex County, Hewitt State Forest, and then we also have the, the Delaware Water Gap Recreation Area. And this is a picture of the Delaware Water Gap, which serves as the boundary between Pennsylvania and New Jersey right here, as we run up the, the Kittatinny Mountains here that are part of the Appalachians. So my conclusion showed that the use of the quadrant is unique because prior research basically grouped bear sightings by municipality as our kind of underlying enumeration units. And we're going to have a lot of spatial bias there because, as you can understand, our study sizes, our enumeration units range from about 0.2 square miles all the way up to more than 200 square miles in West Milford Township in uh, Passaic County. So we have really small enumeration units. We have very large enumeration units. Our range density analysis is useful to simulate the bear range and address data inaccuracy, geocoding, or the placement of the lattice. So this point and polygon analysis that we use for our crowded analysis can be problematic if we have no points that happen to occur within that particular quadrant because of a number of errors or because it's just the way that the placement of the lattice was created. And the other interesting thing that we can do with these quadrants is that we can look at explanatory variables that can be grouped and compared at this particular level. And the other conclusion that I found was that we had unexpected high values in Morris and Warren counties, what I, which I didn't really expect. So going back to these explanatory variables, we can group these at the quadrant level to make correlations or relationships between these using some sort of regression analysis. This is an example of a study that I did here with deer vehicle collisions. And this is just a small study area, but this is exactly what I did for my study area here. But this is what my point density analysis does. And I can group these by quadrants right here. So it's pretty neat what I can do. I'm, I kind of smooth out the data a little bit, uh, and there's some positives and negatives to that. But what I can start to do, and what I didn't do with this study, was I can start to look at explanatory variables. And I didn't get into this. I just wanted to look at the patterns. But this is an example of pixel variety from my NLCD data using my, my five by five square. So I can see where pixel variety is the highest or the lowest. And I can do the same thing with some of this, the quad, the 2,600 quadrants that I have for my Northwest New Jersey. So I can look at things like slope, distance from trash, and the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife and the New Jersey um, um, Department of Environmental Resources has a lot of good GIS data resources. So we can maybe start to see some of these like, explanatory relationships, you know, population density, low population density, you know, straight up population distance from roads or whatnot to look at these patterns of these bear sightings. So as part of my discussion, um, my data set was actually, I think, more than 8,000 points, but I just want to look at nuisance, to, uh, nuisance bears and threats to people and property. So I queried out more than 3,500 Category 3 bears, which are just bears exhibiting normal behavior. And as you can imagine, you know, nuisance bears versus bears exhibiting normal behavior can be somewhat subjective based on the reports that we get from the New Jersey Department of Fish and Wildlife or personal accounts or whatnot. And this number that we got for the actual number of bear sightings determined my quadrant size. So as you can imagine, there's a, a little bit of leeway from the actual number of Category 1 and Category 2 sightings, which are going to play into my quadrant size, which may change the analysis a little bit. But I also looked at MOP, the Modifiable Area Unit Problem. Why well, I changed the quadrant sizes somewhat. I used a couple of different other quadrant sizes, and they did show the same general patterns, because if we did include these Category 3 sightings or I didn't include Category 2 sightings, they did so to show the same general patterns. 
And if you have any questions, this is my contact information. Um, I can be reached at 919-530-6575 or tmaroon at nccu.edu. And in conclusion, this was a really neat project that I started. My brother had started this as a master's student at UNC Greensboro, and he was kind of associating this these patterns with uh, remote sensing data, but he passed away in 2009, and I found this, um, found all of his work from uh, the papers that his wife had given me, and I thought it was pretty neat, and I thought it would turn it into a paper. So this was published as part of, um, published in the Middle States Geographer in 2014, and it has both his name and my name on it, and I had to recontact the people at New Jersey Park Department of Fish and Wildlife to get updated data and kind of figure out what he was starting to do and contact a couple of the people that he had worked with. So, you know, not only was this a pretty neat application of geostatistics, which I'm not really good at, but this has kind of had a, a personal uh, personal point of view for me too and I'm very glad of the results and that should be about it. Thank you very much.